In this video we're going to take a look at how we can draw a line between two mouse clicks on a TK Inter canvas. Let's consider this computer program. We know we need this line when we wish to use TK Inter. Here you can see we have a function and this function has the code within it as you can see here. But it's quite interesting to look here and you can see that we have a variable called click underscore number x1 and y1. And in front of these you can see we have the word global. Now this function will be turned into a format that can be executed at a later date. But what these two lines will do is give us global variables that can be used throughout this program. And I'm going to show those global variables here. And I'm using a simplified view of the variables. So this is going to allow me to put values in these boxes which represent the variables as we execute the computer program. But of course, in reality, what we have within Python is always instances of classes, in other words, objects. But I'm going to go with this pragmatic approach here where this represents a variable, this represents a variable, likewise this one here. And of course, you can see that this variable has this name and so on. But of course, this would be an object of some kind and this would be the name bound to that object. This line will create an instance of a window. This line will create an instance of the canvas class that's associated with that window. The canvas will have a size of 400 by 400 as specified by the width and the height. And here you can see we set the background color to white. Once the canvas is created, we position it using the grid method at row zero, column zero. This line will then bind this event which is activated when you click on the left mouse button and this is the handler and you can see it's draw underscore line and that's the name of this function here. At runtime, what we will see, we'll see the following window and here we have the canvas which is within the window. When this line executes, we can see that it is assigning zero to click underscore number. Now that is shown here schematically, where you can see that this square represents the variable that has this name. So when this line executes, what we're going to get in here, as you can see, is a zero. And then the program is going to go here into the main loop. Now what that means, it means that this is waiting for the user to generate an event. Let's therefore consider the mouse. If I now decide to click on the left button of the mouse, when the cursor is in the position over the canvas, as represented by this X that I'm placing here just for the purpose of this video. So we can see the cursor above the X position, so I'll click it. As I've clicked on the left mouse button, an event is generated that has this name. And if we consider that name, you can see I've used it here in the code. And what this line is doing, it's binding this event to this handler. And of course, this handler is this function here. When Python generates an event, what it will do for us is produce an object that in this case will have the name event. And the reason it has the name event is that's the name I've used here as the parameter in my program. And of course, this object will contain information that I'm interested in. Now for this program, I'm only interested in the X and Y coordinates of the position of the mouse click when the mouse was over the canvas. And if we have a look at where that was as shown by this arrow, you can see it's a little bit along the X axis and a little bit down the Y axis. And in fact, the value we would expect for that position is shown here where X is 10 and Y is 15. Because of this line of code, we can see that this event is tied to this handler. And of course, this handler is this function here. And if we look at the header, we can see in brackets, we have the word event, which means that this object is passed to this function. 
It's a little bit more involved than that. We have something called callback, but I'm not going to worry about that here. Just take it that this schematic diagram is a reasonable approximation to what's going on. And this object will be passed to here and will be able to be used by the code inside this function. Within this function, we can see we have a selection construct, an if else selection construct, which means either this code is going to be executed or this code here is going to be executed. Now, on the first click which we've just observed, the bit that's going to be executed is this. And that's because if we look at this conditional test here, we can see it's asking the question, is the click number the same as zero? Well, let's go and have a look. And you can see, yes, it stores zero. Consequently, this is true, which means this will be executed. And this here, on this call to this handler, will not be executed. So if we look to this line of the code, which will be executed, we can see we're using the name of the object sent to this function, and we're using dot notation to allow us access to the x. Consequently, this is this value 10 here, and that value of 10 is given to x1. And if we come over here to the schematic diagram representation of the variables, you can see that the x1 changes to the value of 10. This is the next line to execute, and you can see we're using the object again, dot notation, and on this occasion we're gaining access to the Y, which we can see here is 15. So 15 is assigned to Y1, and if we look to the schematic animation here, we can see that the Y1 will become 15. This is the next program statement to execute, and you can see that is assigning 1 to click underscore number, so so if you keep your eye on this, you'll see that that changes to 1. Because of the nature of the selection construct, this does not execute. Consequently, we have now finished the execution of this function, and we return to the main loop. So what's just been achieved? Well, if you remember, we clicked the position as represented by this X here, and we have just managed to capture and store the X1 and Y1 position of that click on the canvas, because these two variables here are global variables, and the value of 10 and 15 will remain there until we change them. I would also like to point out that this variable stores 1, and that will remain there until the program changes it. And we'll come back to why it's important that this is 1 when we look at what happens when we click on the mouse button in a different position on the canvas in a moment. Of course, the event has now finished and we're back in this main loop, so we can say that the object that we can see here and the name of the event no longer are valid. But if we look here, we can see we've saved the X and Y coordinate position of the mouse click. So let's now move the cursor to a different position and we'll click the mouse here. And the position that I'm going to move the cursor to, I'm going to mark with this X here. So I'll click in this position and we get the same event taking place and we know because of this line that this event is bound to this handler which is this code here. Of course we will now have an object created that will take up the name event and because we clicked in a different area on the canvas this object will have different values of x and y as you can see here the x is 250 and the y is 150 representing the position of the mouse click as we've shown here with this cross. Now if we consider this conditional test it's asking is click underscore number the same as zero well, if we come over here, we can see it's not. It's a 1. Consequently, if we come to this here, this returns false. Now, that means that this code is not executed. Instead, this code here is executed. Now, if you look at these two lines, and in particular look at the X2 and the Y2, these are examples of local variables. Now, these are variables that belong to this function and cannot be accessed outside of this function. In addition, x2 and y2 have a lifetime equal to the length of execution of the function, which means they only exist during the execution of the code within this function. Now, schematically, I'm going to show the variables x2 and y2 
here. This line will now execute and we can see here we're going to be accessing this value, the 250, and it'll be assigned to X2. And if we look over here, we can see the 250 being assigned to the X2. We then come on to this line and of course this will go to this object. It'll gain access to this value of Y and that will be assigned to Y2 here. And if we come over here, we can see that going into the Y2 variable. This is the next program statement to execute and you can see it is a message to this canvas that invokes this method. And if we look to the arguments of this method, we can see here that we have the coordinate positions of the line. These two are one end of the line and these two are the other end of the line. So let's go and have a look at these two here, the X1 and the Y1, and we can see that they have this value here, 10 and 15 respectively. If you look here at X2 and Y2, you can see that these have these values here, 250 and 150. Now I've left these two X's on the canvas for the purpose of this video. They won't appear when you run this program. And you can see that we're marking the beginning and the end of the line as defined by these variables here and as I've shown them in the schematic diagram here. And we can see that the fill is black and that the width of the line is 10. So what's going to happen? A line is going to be drawn between the two positions as marked by the X as you can see here. Now I'll just remove these two X's so we can see what the runtime will actually be as shown here. The next program statement to execute is this one and you can see that click underscore number is being assigned zero. So if you look to the schematic diagram and keep your eye on this, you will see it changes from 1 to 0. Once this program statement has finished its execution, then we can see that this has finished its execution, and we find ourselves returning back to the main loop, waiting for another event to take place. Of course, we need to mention that the line has now been drawn and the event is now being handled. Consequently, this object here is no longer in existence, so we remove it. We now need to consider these variables here. Well, these three are examples of global variables, and because we are still in this main loop, they will still exist. Whereas these two variables here, which we use within this function, and they were local variables, will no longer be in existence because their lifetime was the lifetime of the function. And of course, that's finished executing. So they will also be removed from the schematic diagram. And what we are left with are these values here, which are the global variables. Now you will remember from a moment ago I said that this was the last program statement to execute before we went into the main loop. And if you have a look at this again, you can see it was responsible for setting this to zero. Now why was that necessary? Well the answer is, the next time you click on the canvas, we will come to this conditional test here and ask if the click number is the same as zero, and clearly it is. So this will be true, which means we will now execute this line. And of course, we will then get the new value of x, the new value of y, and assign those to x1 and y1. So these values here, which are currently still storing 10 and 50, will be overwritten with the new value for the beginning of the line. Of course, this line is then executed, and it will change the click number to 1. So that when the user clicks again, and we decide to execute this event handler on the basis that the event has occurred again, this here will now be false, and we will execute this, which will find the end point of the line, draw it, and then reset the click number back to zero again. Before I complete this video, what I would like to stress is that I've done this in a procedural paradigm, which means having a function here, which really is separate code to this. And if you have a look at this function, you'll see I've declared global variables that can be used throughout this program. Now, I do not like using global variables in the way in which I've shown them here. What I wanted to do, however, in this video is to show you how you can capture these coordinate positions and draw a line between any two mouse clicks on a canvas. And I wanted to do this without the added complexity of the object-orientated paradigm. The way in which I would 
personally develop my code would be in the object orientated paradigm where this function would become a method encapsulated with the data that I require i.e. these coordinate positions so in the next video I'm going to show an object orientated way of achieving the same thing but I would stress to you now if you haven't seen the videos on the object orientated approach to coding that I've already completed and is in a separate playlist on this channel I recommend that you look up the videos on self and the videos on double underscore in it double underscore just do a search on YouTube in the search of this channel and the videos will pop up. So if you're not quite sure what self is and the init method that goes with object orientated programming, I would suggest you have a look at them now while I develop the video that does the same thing as this in terms of the runtime, but does it in the object orientated paradigm. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?